making a video? No, I'm just holding the camera for no damn reason. Oh. Love your mask. It's beautiful. Oh. Keep me alive from all this lead poisoning. Looks like Christmas in there. Slaughter. Yeah, well, um, 36 and, four, and 37. Number what 36, a massive amount 36. of amps you've created. Well, I never thought I'd be making 36 and 37, 10 in, you know. I got parts for a few more, too, so I'm, people want them, they keep buying them, I'm going to keep building them. It's the best well, amp I can the build. the amp pioneer. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time I've been building this way for many, many years. No circuit boards. Point How'd you ever get paid for your work? It well, take, how I mean, long does it take to do this? Like 40 hours. 30 probably. each or 40 total? Or yeah, 50 40 or... hours to just wire this pair, let alone the chassis. And, you know. How'd Ken get paid? Check out these welds. Yeah, they're nice. Um, well, we didn't get paid. Pioneers. We were pioneers. You're blazing the trail of boutique amp. Yeah, no, there was no customers for this. That if were non-Fender and Marshall. If it didn't say Marshall or Fender on it, you, you couldn't sell it to somebody. We, we, we made amps for $1,000, $800, $1,000. I didn't even pay for the parts. Sounds like put, a shitty business model. It was terrible. We, Who, whoever made a bit good we, business model put, out of boutique amps? We put, you know, 50 hours of labor in for free, you know, and then most of those people were thankless. Like, some of them were good, but I remember one guy I built a beautiful stereo amp for that sounded incredible the way he wanted it with all his features and stuff. And, there were, like I said, there was no market for it, right? And, it, and then he brings it back three weeks later and goes, this isn't good enough, and leave. I'm just going to leave it with you to make it better. You know, and then calls me 40 years later, you owe me an amp, you know? <laughs> I mean, it... it it was, it you could was, give them a hundred dollar credit. It was brutal. <laughs> it was brutal, and none of us made any money. And what? And I don't complain about that. You'll never hear me complain about that. But what annoys me is being a pioneer in this. Okay, so that all these kids make these amps now. And guess what they make? Copies of Fenders and Marshalls. The only two amps you could sell then. Or, or, or a train wreck. They copy a train wreck. Or they copy a, copy a Dumble. The they, actually only they're, probably they're good business model. They're the only for, two amps you could sell. And we pioneered all this for them to just make copies cheaper. Not even as good as those amps were. That Now that's, that annoys me a little bit. Okay. Well, okay, yeah, we know that I from your, forgive. we know that from your what is a boutique amp. Right. Uh, that does annoy me a little bit. But there was... If you're asking, there was a guy that actually was a pioneer that made... Sort of. No, he was a pioneer. He made money. He got paid for all those hours. By being a snob. By being being made fun of by everybody, even to this day, of the way he did business. And who's laughing now? He had a business model. Okay, like, we didn't. We were stupid. I just built an amp. Someone wanted an amp, I built it. And by the time I'm done, I gave him a price, and I go, oh, shit, man, I paid more than this for parts. But so what? He's going to play my amp, and people are going to know who I am. whoop de do, right? Where does that get you in life? Um, anyway. That this, and a dollar will get you a cup of coffee. That's right. And what this guy's business model was, was I will not sell an amp to anyone who isn't rich, famous, or I think he's going to be rich and famous, but he's got to be rich because he's got to have money to pay me because I'm not going to work for free. Okay. And I've never been like that. All I've morphed into is you gotta have the money. <laughs> Which means you can't be like collecting from the government and never working in your life. You gotta like be somebody who can afford it. If you can afford it, I don't care. Well, you didn't what. even charge him what you should. Yeah, I, but this guy wanted to. You Still had don't. To, you had to send him your music. You, you had to be approved by him. It was a you business model. Auditioned. It was a business model. He made that decision early on and it worked for him. Because he was rich and he didn't he made need money. the money. I don't know. I don't know what no, he, he Alexander's had a cushion. life was. I would imagine, you know, he was in California. He was a good guitar player, by the way, and was dealing with a lot of good quality musicians. But I, I'm going to assume he had plenty of money and it wasn't like me. He had to, you know, had to try to earn a living, you know, thanklessly working on people's beat up shit guitars and amps and all that just to be able to pay 
the two hundred dollar rent in a guitar shop on the fifth floor of some apartment building. You know, I mean, I, I, he probably didn't have that situation. You couldn't, not with his business model. You know, but couldn't turn away too much. Work. Anyway, enough about that guy. But but he he's one of the only guys I know that was a pioneer that got paid to do his work. You know, and that's. Uh, didn't Jim Kelly make quite a few names? Yeah. I think he did. Mm -hmm. He was in and out of the business, though. He had, he had, a, he had a regular day job, like he was a yeah, professor or something. Yeah, he was a professor or something. And me, too. I, did, I, never, I never made any money doing this. I, I had to get out of this. In the, um, when, I, when I was about 30 years old, I realized I had wasted my youth. <laughs> coming, no, really, coming up with these tones and stuff, and it, there was never going to be a reward in it. A well, reward as in being able to buy a house and live like a regular person. And it was sad because, you know, you, 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 you pioneered the youth of your life. And, it, and when I was in my Yeah, the 30s, amps didn't pay for their own room, did they? No, I, I had to find another way to... <laughs> Most of your amp guys probably don't know that right. your regular business is that what you do. Right. This is, to me, a side business and because I love doing it. But I get paid now. When I make an amp now... Just don't get paid enough for what you it's good enough for me. It's it's because I well, love. I don't know how it. much all those freaking parts cost. Yeah. Custom made chassis, all the things. Yeah, yeah. It gets, Vintage it gets, resistors. Yeah, what I used to sell stuff. amps for in the old days, you couldn't pay for these two transformers. It's custom model transformers. But anyway, that's the story of um, the pioneering of uh, two. So the pioneers amp of amp building are who? Name them in your order. Not including I yourself. Don't think not including yourself. I don't know. I well, don't. Dumble made the money at it, and his Dumble amps go for was the a most pioneer, money. No doubt. Ken, Ken never made any money in his lifetime, but his amps go for a lot of money now. Yeah. You never made any money at it, really. Now, but you're still doing it, so. Yeah, I break even. And at you've it got now. your new item, which is your new improved item, and the old unimproved item just sold for like what twenty grand. Oh, they, yeah. People buy vintage of my amps for lots of money. And guitars too. Yeah. Yeah. But um. I can't, I can't build a better amp than this. I've always been refining and refining and refining, and, and I would never say that, but now I would say that because I'm old enough to know the tones this thing makes, and I've seen it in a lot of people's hands, not just mine, that this really not a better, you're not gonna get better uh, amplifier than this. If that's what you're wanting, your signature tone. If you want, if you don't want to sound like someone else, yeah. If you want, if you want to be able to create your own tone, um, and that's all I've ever been about. Like I wouldn't build a Marshall or a Fender copy. It would be a total waste of time. Or a train wreck. To, yeah, total waste of my time. Um, but um, enough other people so, doing that. So this is the end of the line for me, you know. So well, until you run out of those parts, and then you yeah, have to redesign around new parts. Right. Yeah, silver wire is getting real hard to get now too. Well, I thought some of those other things you buy from all over the world, the, yeah. from old warehouses, they they're running out. Right. Yeah. Like your geran germanium fuzz, how many of those things are going to turn out to be good enough? As many as those transistors I have are left, and then that's it. It's probably no more bags of those things. No. no you will. How many of those do you have? Two bags. I don't know. I I'd have to count them up. Not many, but. Yeah, but such a low percentage of them even turn out to be right. Even in a sealed. Luckily, bag. I can get tubes for these amps. These amps function nice on, on the, uh, the Russian 12AX7 long plate, and the uh, JJ KT77. You know, these are not tubes that are going to be used. I don't care about these. These are broken tubes. But I'm very picky about how I do everything. I would never solder a tube socket without a tube exactly in place so the solder can't run down in there solder and can't run down up. plus when the tube is in place all the pins are exactly where they're going to reside when the amp is functioning and that's where you should be solder i mean you learn all these things from fixing broken amps amps that are always broken marshall's vendors constant repairs um, but that's what i spent all my youth figuring out and it's in it's been in my amps for decades you know the revisions of all the mistakes other people you know what not to do you know and that doesn't get any better either these amps just don't break I mean this I'm really proud of these 10 amps as, as you can tell <laughs> well, I know you're happy and you love to play them I know I, I, I when I walked in I didn't I, I walked through and I kind of pointed at the amp museum or whatever you call mm -hmm. it all the old amps 
And, no, those and, old amps are good. They're but, nice. They're but nice you never amps. play them. No. When you have one of these, and this happens to all the people that own them, all yep. you really want... There's spider webs growing on the old ones. All you really want when you have one of these is what? Another one of those. Another one. That's and like the, the only two thing matching would, cabs in the front. Yeah, it's the only thing you would waste your money on on another ramp. You know, it's like this. It's just a waste unless it's another one of these because because these guys realize when they well, get, some of your guys go after the older ramps when they find them yeah. not used. Well, most of the really good players get this and go, "Oh crap, man! All I really care to have is another one of these." You know, which is kind of cool. But well, here is thirty six and thirty seven happening. So if you got the money, <laughs> you could buy both. Well, you know what the best part of this is to me. What? Okay, when you speak of that, if you got the money, like who? Who's out there, right? These amps are not spoken for, right? I don't know who's gonna buy these amps, like any of my amps that I sell. I have a pretty good idea sometime who's gonna come up with the money, but in this case, for instance, and in most all the other 30 something, whatever, because this is 36 and 37, I had no clue, right? Someone's gonna buy this amp, someone's gonna buy this amp. So all this work and all this time I put in to these amps, so far, nobody's bought two at the same time, have they? Oh. But one guy did get both of a matched pair. He just bought them separately. That guy early on with the purple. Right, right, right. But um, what was I saying? You were talking about how that, that one's oh, going to go to so, somebody. Yeah. So all this time and labor I put into this and all this, you know, it, it, it's for that reason. It's to know that... So I love when somebody loves the amp and they're happy. When somebody comes over here and plays these things and goes, oh, I got to have that. You know, for me to know that this amp is being, music is being made through this now with this guy for, you know, all of time. It's just Until he's not making music. Really anymore. hard to find used, you know. Yeah, so that's pretty good, you know. But that's why I do it, you know. Because I already have mine. I, have, I own three. The three that are out there are mine. Well, you know, I don't want four. Eventually, I'm going to get one more before all the parts are gone. I'm going to, you know, and all the amps are gone. I'll always have four because it'll always be these in testing or one in testing. But, but um, I got to pick that resistor up before I step on. Well, these one thing that that that, that Alexander Dumble has could be inspired you inspire you to. Uh, just be a little more careful who where they go to since a few of them naturally did come up well I've always I, I've in in my recent life I've been I've been careful but not like him I don't care how much money you have or, or, or may, what, I don't you even jump care. through hoops of fire yeah, to get I don't one. even care what you play what I want to know is you're not one of these guys that buy shit just because someone else told you to buy it and then you're gonna sell it in two weeks because it didn't turn you into Jimi Hendrix okay that's where my that's my, I'm the soup Nazi guy about that, okay? I turn a lot of people down on these amps. I blow them off. Because I, 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 I go and I look at their record of they buy this and buy that and buy this and buy that. and they, they, they want it for the wrong reason, you know? And whenever anybody comes here and plays it, I don't have to worry about none of that because I can see what they're doing with it. And they look up at me and go, oh, no, I got to have this. But the guys that just buy up from hearing the videos and stuff, they're pretty smart, they're pretty astute, and they've talked to the other people that have them, and then when they get it, it's even better than they thought it was going to be, you know, and I feel good, but there are some people that start inquiring completely wrong, you know, like, and, and, Don't and tell. they just buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell, and you look at their record, and they're not buying and selling cheap stuff, they're buying and selling stuff that they're losing $1,000 to $1,500 on every purchase they make. And I, did, I didn't grow up like that. It's just silly to me, but it's not a personal thing because I wasn't able to do that. It's just because it's not where I want my amp going, you know. They're so, like puppies. Yeah. I, you, I want don't them, want, you want them to have a good home. Right. You don't want them to wait, someone to wait until they grow up a little bit and then decide they don't like them anymore and then abandon them. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not who knows the, what's I, happened I don't want to be in then. the amp of the month club, you know. Anyway, this video is getting pretty long. Yeah, probably. But is. um, let's Still close going. it out with um, some more lead poisoning. All Why right. am I wearing this mask? Watch this. You better take your hat off. I'm almost 60 years old now, right? And I've been breathing this stuff without this for a lot of years, and uh, I'm quite shocked that it hasn't taken its toll on me. 
Well, just to give you an idea, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down the line saw right here, and you watch what's going on here. With it. this is lead and rosin. I'm breathing it. I don't like it. I'm leaving. You see this? Well, and you if gotta you start, get right when you're ready to start making guitars again, then you can breathe sawdust. Yeah, like that isn't bad. I, mean, I always horrible. I know, they're both bad, but I think this is probably worth. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Who knows what you can catch from sawdust, fungus, and all kinds of things. Anyway, say goodbye. Bob. Peace out. Love your mask. You look like a. I don't know what you look like.